Hi guys, it's Tom from Red's Radio Controlled Models again. What we have here for you today is the build overview of the Flightline RC 1600mm Spitfire. And this model features a 4 blade scale prop, which is a lovely 16x10 size. Makes it nice and scale, which sometimes you don't normally get on this size of foam warbird. It features a 5055 390 kV motor, which runs on a 6S3300-5000. It features 17 gram servos all the way around. Just to give you that little bit of extra torque on the servos, and they're hybrid gear, so part nylon, part metal, which makes them strong, really, really strong and torquey, but not with the extra weight of a full metal geared setup. It's got lights, it's got an 80 amp speed control, which is great just to be able to cope the power because the amp draw is about 60 amp. So on a 5000 flight times are going to be great, so it's a nicely over spec speed control. The wingspan, as I said earlier, is 1600mm and the length is 1350 so it's a really, really nice size model. I think it's the biggest foam Spitfire on the market at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll get on with the build overview and we'll catch you in a bit. So the first thing that we need to do is to undo these two screws here onto the servos. Just by undoing these two, you can get the elevator and the rudder push rods nice and free, like that. And what you need to do is you need to push them all the way out the back of the fuselage. And what I'm going to do is pull them all the way out. And the only reason why they put them in is just for storage so it doesn't damage the airframe at all. So I'm going to pull mine all the way out. Make sure you remember which way round they go because one side is threaded and one side isn't. You always want the threaded side poking out the back of the fuselage. So once you've done that, the next thing to do is to glue the fuselage onto the tail. Unfortunately, Freewing, this is the first kit that Freewing haven't included any glue on. So you're going to need to get some glue yourself. So I've got a little bit of the Freewing EPO glue left over from the last model that I'd made. So I'll be using that just to stick it back on. The, f the manual does say to use epoxy but the it does say in the actual diagram just there EPO glue. So because it is such a tight fit on the back I'm going to use obviously the e the glue that came with the last freewing kit. You can use epoxy if you wish 5 minute, 15, 20 whatever you wish to use. The quicker setting sort of the better with this. Um, or you can use a hoop or a hoop or is great on EPO models because it doesn't age very well um, very badly sorry so it doesn't go brittle which epoxy does on EPO so when you glue it what you've got to make sure that you do is you glue all of the surface around the tail so all the way around here all the way up there all the way around there and on the inside but you need to make sure you do not get any glue into that hole in there. If you get any glue in there you're going to create some linkage problems later on. So I'm just going to go and put some glue on the surface now and then I'll come back to you once I stick the tail on. So when you're sticking the tail on, I've put the glue on both sides and pushing it in. This is why you need sort of a fairly quick setting glue but nothing as quick as CA. Push it in and then line it up. Just make sure that when you line it up, this top surface on here lines up with the same panel line and then just squeeze it up nice and tight. You should then find that the gap of the panel line is all the same. So I, because I'm using the free wing glue, I'm going to take mine back out and let it go off for about 90 seconds. But when you do let, make, let it go off, make sure that the panel lines line up on both sides of the model. So once you've glued the tail on and everything's lined up nice and straight, what you can do, what you need to do now is put the, the rod back in. You can do this halfway through, which may be a little bit easier, and feed it through and just to make sure it goes through the sock. But I find that mine just goes straight through, and then just push it back in to where it would normally be in the fuselage. And then just turn the model back over onto its back, and then where you've got your servos. Just put it back through the hole that it was in originally. And you just do the same for the other side as well. 
and then don't worry about doing them up because you'll do them up once you put the control rod actually on later. Next thing to do in the manual, which is a real, real simple step, is the same as all other free wing kits, is to put the horizontal stabiliser on. So you've got your horizontal stabiliser in two pieces. You've got one side with the carbon fiber bar and one with the slot for it to go into. All you do is you just push it onto the tail here and then screw it down underneath on the plastic lugs with four little screws. And they're those ones that are in that bag there. Again, they're all separately bagged up by Freewing, which makes it nice and easy to do. As I say, you just push one side in to there, push it up nice and tight, and then the other side, you do the same thing. Just gotta make sure that at the back, the little triangular locators locate up, and then all you gotta do is just screw, as I said earlier, the four screws in underneath on here. So once you've done putting the horizontal stabiliser on, what you need to do next is pull this elevator rod, sorry, rudder rod all the way through and put one of the ball link ends on. Now I do find them a little bit awkward sometimes to get on, so I generally just put a pair of pliers over the edge just to help grip it so that when I twist it on it just makes it that little bit easier. Like that. I'd always make sure that you turn these on with plenty of thread in them because you can always adjust it at the other end with the link. There we go, that should just about do it. A couple more. There we go. So once you've got that on, just clip that bit over the ball link there. Before you put the rudder to tailwheel connector on, which is just a rod with a ball link on again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to centre the servo in the fuselage and then centre up the tailwheel. Because if I can get the tailwheel nice and centre on there, then I can adjust the rudder so that it's in line with the tailwheel, which will make it just that little bit easier when I come to set it all back up. So just move it across just so it's in line. That means that when I put the rudder linkage on, I know exactly how far I need to bring it back. The instructions do have the whole distances that you need. So the rudder push rod size is 65mm, which is the shortest one in the bag. So you've got your normal push rod, as per the other ones, then you'll need your white clip over bit. Now this one goes on to the second hole into here, so just push that in, it goes in top way down, like that, might just need a little bit of a wiggle just to get it in, make sure that tail will centre and then see how that centres. So you can see that, that push rod is too short, so I'm just going to need to wind it off a little bit on this side. So the next thing to do obviously is to put this rudder linkage onto this ball link here. So I've got the rod, I've pushed it in, I've tested to make sure it's the right length, which it is, and then just get your little plastic swing keeper, push it over the top, and then if you've got a pair of pliers, use a pair of pliers just to hold that white bit in place, just by going around the back and clipping it on, like that. So now you've got your tail wheel attached, you can reattach this ball link if you've had to take it off, like so, and you can adjust the tail wheel travel when you get to the servo end, when you actually plug them all in anyway. So once you've done it for the rudder, you've got to do exactly the same thing for the elevator. Push your rod back through, grab one of your screw-on ball links, use a pair of pliers, and then just clip it onto that ball link as before. The next bit, once you've done the fuselage and the elevator, is to put the wing together. Now the wing comes in two separate parts with a carbon spar in the box. I've put that in one side. Now all you wires that are in the side of the wing here and here will all need to be pulled out before you put this wing together. 
otherwise you'll end up trapping them. And it can be a little bit awkward, so just get a pair of pliers and just gently tease those out. Once you've teased them out and you've moved them to one side, be aware that there's two in the back, there's one in the back, sorry, for flaps. Grab your wing, slot it on that carbon spar, and push the wing together. As you're pushing it together, again, make sure that those wires are out of the way. Use a little bit of tape just to hold it flat on here. There we go, and then just push it to. Then you've got these locating lugs in the back. Push those up. Again, just double check your wires. And then make sure that they're all pushed in right at the back as well. Once you've done all of that, you then have two. You'll have, then you have your bag of screws. Now the bag of all the other screws that you get normally with free wing to hold the wings on. And all you do is just use two, one in the front lug, and then one in the back lug. If you can see that. So all I'm going to do is just screw it in, and then the next bit is the blue box. So once the wings together with the two bolts, the next thing to do is to put the free wing blue box in. Now the blue box comes with 3M tape on the back. However, if you want to keep this as a two piece wing, I would change the 3M tape on the back of the box for Velcro. And this way you can take the box off and just mount it onto one side. Otherwise you're gonna be resting it on the wing tips as you're trying to store it if you don't have flat storage. So I'm going to use the 3M tape because I'm, I've got the storage to be able to keep it as a one piece wing. All you do is you take the 3M tape off and you've got this nice little groove in here. So all you need to do is just put it nicely into that slot. You'll find it just sits perfectly in there. You've then got your wires coming off from the blue box, which is fine. There for your receiver. And everything on the blue box is labelled up in terms of aileron, flap, and everything else. So all you need to do is just plug them in as they are on there. So it gives it a nice, easy, only three wire connection to your receiver, rather than having loads of wire leads and everything. It just makes it that little bit neater. Once you've done the blue box, next thing to do is to put these plastic lugs in. I've already put the one in the back. All you do is you've got this slot here and they just slot in on top of there. Again, if you want to keep it as a two-piece wing, which is going to be which you can do, but it will take a little bit of a little bit of work just for storage then don't glue these in. However, if you're going to keep it as a one-piece wing, I'd use just a little bit of contact adhesive just on any of those bits around there, just to hold it in. But don't use too much, just in case you ever need to get at the wing to get anything out. Once you've done that, next thing is to put all your control rods on for the ailerons and the flaps. Again, as per all the other free wing stuff, centralise your servos on your radio first. Make sure it's powered on and centralised, then you can put your control rods on. They're exactly the same as the other ones. You've got two long ones for the ailerons and two very short ones for the flaps. All you need to do is centralise the servos and then put them on to the length that they need to be. I'm going to do that now and I'll catch you for the next bit. As you can see, everything's all set up. Ailerons are working nicely. One lovely feature about this model is you've got this dual split flap. You've got a centre bit and an outer bit. And they're not on servo slows, so it means that you've got normal servo speed servos. It makes it a little bit cheaper if you ever need to replace it if you knock it or anything like that. So, as you can see, you've got all your ribbon on the inside which is really really nice and they've even moulded the ribbon in foam on the inner bit there 
which is a really really nice feature and they work really really well if you've got a servo slow feature on your transmitter you can set it just to get that little bit more of a of a scale speed on it which is what I've just done there but you can see absolutely gorgeous in terms of scale fidelity you've then also got your attracts which if I extend it for you here there is a little bit of a delay nice and scale and have a look at those audios absolutely gorgeous to show you down the front of it as well as you can see fully sprung absolutely fantastic for a model of this size it is unbelievable you can see there you've got your also you can leave a spring part so once you've done all of that the next thing that you can do is you can put the cannons on now the cannons in the instructions say not to glue them in which is fine they do sit in quite well and all you need to do is just find your point and push them in this means that when it comes to transport it's a little bit easier the only thing I do find is that over a little bit of time I do think that they'll become slightly loose with wear so you may end up having to put like a chamfer on it or if not just add a little bit of glue because to be honest with you with how strong they are they're not going to snap off particularly easily in transport so the next thing that we need to do is to screw the wing on so when you do it make sure in the fuselage you've got this little wire coming out just here and that's your strobe light for the top of the fuselage that needs to go into the blue box onto the wing into the LED strobe light which is on the other side if you have a look at the manual it does show you in there exactly where it all needs to go so you've got your, your wing these wires just need to go down the front and then this wire just goes as I said before into this blue box it's on the opposite side to where all your other wires go the only thing that I did wish that Freewing would have done is made this wire just that little bit longer just because it does make it a little bit awkward to fit in there we go, so that's now in and make sure all your wires go down into this gap in the fuselage so once you've got your wing on like that it should fit nice and snug you'll notice that there's two screw holes at the front and two screw holes right at the back down here which you just can't quite see there we go two there and then you've got this one right at the front the one that goes right at the front is for your radiator scoop so that just slots nicely in there and then screws down there there's no air that goes into there so it's not going to blow off so that means you can keep it as that two piece wing that I was talking about earlier also so once you've done that you've got all the rest of the screws that screw down onto here you've also got in your kit these radiators on the inside it does say R and L so you can't get them mixed up and they just glue on with a contact adhesive like I said earlier just put them on as you normally would and then glue them in so I'm going to screw this wing on and then I'll show you the next bit so once you've done all of that the next thing is your wing fillets these bits here you get two of them one for each side make sure you get the right one on the right side and they should just pop in with a nice tightish fit like that if they do that's great that means your wings in the right place and they're in the right place same thing again they need to be glued on I'm going to use a bit of a contact adhesive just because of where they're placed if they do get knocked and I do need a spare of them then I can get a spare fairly easy so again I'm just going to glue that one up and do the same on the other side and I'll catch you on the next bit so the next thing that we need to do is to put the propeller together now I've already put three of the blades in it's the same as most of the other freewing stuff so you've got your pin, pins on the back for locating 
and they just push in into there. Now on this kit they are quite tight so they do need a good fair push. Now this is where it gets a little bit different compared to all the other Freeman kits. You have a cross mount that goes over the top of the blades. Obviously because this is now a 6L model the amount of torque that is pushed through the motor is considerably more. So you have the cross mount and then you also have these and you've got your anti-vibration washers. So the washer that goes on top of the metal block. So just sit that over the top, put your washer on and then push that through in through there and then it will go through the blades. Now these are allen keys so just make sure that you've got the right size and then they just rotate down there. So I'm going to do all the rest exactly the same and then I'll show you how to put this the actual spinner back plate onto the front of the model with the spinner front. So once you put the blades together, next thing to do is to put it on. You can see that you've got this keyed front motor shaft like on all the other flight line models. And just put it on so it's nice and square and then just push it up. Now I did find that mine was very very tight so I would put the nut on, make sure it's squared up, put the back and then just put a screwdriver through the front nut and twist it around. This means that you can get, and as you can see it's pushing it back, you can get it up nice and tight as well once it's on. There we go and just tweak it up. And that's that done. So the next thing to do is to put the spinner on. Our spinner comes in two little bits. You've got a nose cone, you've got a back bit. So what you need to do is put the nose the spinner on like that and then put the screw that you've got in the front through the, the spinner with one of those nuts. Once it's in, grab your screwdriver, push it all the way back and screw it up. The screw has got a little bit of Loctite on it, so that means it will definitely will not come undone. And it screws into the front of that nut that you just put on the last. Like that. And then once you've done that, you just push the front in there. So there's two things left to do on the kit before it's all done. First thing is to glue on the mirror and to put on the antenna. I'm going to do these after I've done the transfers. When you glue this on please do not use super glue. If you use super glue what you'll do is you'll cloud the canopy. So use a little bit of contact adhesive or, P or canopy glue just to stick that on. This doesn't really need sticking in, it's tight enough in the slot as it is, but if you feel like you want to glue it in, you can do. I'm going to leave it unstuck just in case if I do knock it during transport, it's not going to snap off. Lastly is the transfers. Now, Flightline, as per normal, they've got their transfer sheet here with measurements for all the decal dimensions and exactly where everything goes. The only thing I got a little bit confused when I got this out was you have three different types of transfers. You have water slides on the smaller sheet, you have vinyl on those and the bigger transfers, and then you have the typical transfer on the normal de on the other decals. I've already gone through these with the flight line, Spitfire, you obviously just push them on rub them down and then peel them off and they're great. The vinyl ones I'd recommend putting them on with a little bit of soapy water underneath the vinyl when you put it on. Only a very small amount of soap though. This means that when you put them on you've got a little bit of a floating effect so you can move it exactly where you need to and then you can just push the water and the air out of the 
out of the decal from the centre out. This means that you'll get a bubble free application. The same with the front and the same with the lines. Obviously you want to make sure that you get no decals as to the lovely matte finish but it is a little bit more of a time intensive process to put them on. Water slides, anybody that's made plastic kits in the past you'll know exactly how to put these on. I use warm water with a little bit of soap in it and again soak them in. I always cut them out just so that they're I'm only getting one off at a time and then just again put a bit of soapy water on the surface that you're putting it on from the bowl and then just move it across and then push the air out. So that's it for the 1600mm Flightline Spitfire. As you can see once you put all the transfers on it is an absolutely stunning airframe. It's a really nice size, lovely force blade scale prop and you've also got lights as well. The strobe light on the top, if you put it into the wrong port you'll get what I've got here and got it so it's stuck on. The other port will cause it to flash. So not got to worry about that. But I just left it on so that you could see how bright the LED was. It's quite impressive for how small it is. So overall this aircraft is lovely in scale. You've got your canopy hatch in the top. The same as on the 1200mm Spitfire. As I was going to say earlier, the centre of gravity that's stated in the manual is correct. So make sure you use that centre of gravity. And the other thing to note is in the instructions it does say add 1 to 2 millimetres of up elevator for standard level flight. So make sure you add that in. Um, and there's a little bit of a flat to elevator mix as well. Just make sure you read the manual and go for what they say. The control throws, they're about right in the manual. Now I've added quite a little bit more expo on the top because I did find at times it was a little bit twitchy especially in the high speed dives. So I've added about 35% expo just to soften that centre out. But as you can see it's an absolutely stunning aircraft. I mean for the, for the size of it and also the scale fidelity it is amazing. So I'm going to get off to the flying field and I'll catch you for the flight review.